The initial and final value theorems associated with the Laplace transforms serve as consistency checks between the time domain and frequency domain functions related to each other by the transform. They allow us to verify that f of s is consistent with the initial and final values of f of t, which in many instances we can deduce from the circuit. We're going to first consider the initial value theorem. And in doing so, we need to point out that f of s must be a proper fraction. In other words, this only works if there are no impulse functions in f of t. The initial value theorem states that the limit as t approaches 0 plus of f of t is equal to the limit as s approaches infinity of s f of s. To prove this theorem, we're going to start with the operational transform that we've already developed. That is that the Laplace transform of the derivative df dt, which is defined as the integral from 0 minus to infinity df dt e to the minus st dt, is equal to s f of s minus f at 0 minus. That's the uh, operational transform that we proved in an earlier video. The proof proceeds by taking the limit as s approaches infinity on both sides of this equation. So we have then the limit as s approaches infinity of the integral from 0 minus to infinity df dt e to the minus st, that's a t right there, st dt must then equal the limit as s approaches infinity of s f of s minus f at 0 minus. Now looking first at the right hand side here, because the second term is a constant and independent of s, this then on the right hand side becomes simply, and let's give ourselves a little bit of room, this then is equal to the limit as s approaches infinity of s f of s minus that initial value f of 0 minus. On the left hand side we're going to break the integral up into two um, regions. The first is going to be still the limit as s approaches infinity of the integral from 0 minus to 0 plus just across the origin df dt e to the e to the minus st but because um, t is only evaluated at 0, we can call this e to the 0 dt, plus then the second term, the limit as s approaches infinity of the integral from 0 plus to infinity of df dt e to the minus st dt. Now, there's some rather interesting arguments that we make here. Looking first at this second integral, because the derivative variable or the integral variable, the variable integration is t, the limit can come in to the inside the um, integral, and we can let s approach infinity, which makes this then e to the minus infinity. This term here goes to zero. And this term gives us, or does not participate, or get, has no contribution to the left-hand side. The first integral, because it's only valid at t equals 0, and the place where we had the s dependency was in the exponent here, we have e to the 0 because t equals 0. This, then, is not a function of s. And we have simply on the left-hand side, then, when you integrate df dt over t, we end up with f of t evaluated from 0 minus to 0 plus. So we have then, when we evaluate it at the limits on the left hand side, we have f of 0 plus minus f at 0 minus. That's our left hand side. Then over here, bringing this on down, we have this then carrying it on down, limit as s approaches infinity of s, f, capital F, of s, minus f of 0, 
minus. On both sides, we have a negative f of 0 minus term, which then cancels or adds to 0 on both sides. And we're left with what we started out to prove, that the limit as t approaches 0 plus of f of t, that's what this value is here, the limit as t approaches 0 plus of f of t must then equal the limit as s approaches infinity of s f of s. Let's demonstrate the usefulness of the uh, initial value theorem by doing a quick example. So for example, let's assume that we have f of s is equal to 1 over s plus 1 over s plus 2. From the transform tables, we know that this has a time domain function f of t that is equal to u of t plus e to the minus 2t, u of t, if you will. Before we apply the initial value theorem, let's combine these and just make this a little bit cleaner here. So we're going to have s plus 2 plus s in the numerator over s times s plus 2. Uh, combining terms here, then we have 2s plus 2 in the numerator and s times s plus 2 in the denominator. Now, s, f of s then, is equal to s times f of s, which is 2s plus 2 over s times s plus 2. We notice in this case that the s is cancel. And we're now in a position to take then the limit as s approaches infinity of s f of s, which in this case is equal to the limit as s approaches infinity of this term right here, 2s plus 2 over s plus 2. And in the time domain, this thing here must, we're going to give ourselves some room to work, must equal then the limit as t approaches 0 plus of f of t, which is u of t plus e to the minus 2t u of t. Evaluating the limit on the left-hand side, we could use L'Hopital's rule, where we have s to the first power and s to the first power there, so you differentiate both in one time, and you find the limit there as it approaches 2. But let me just show you a little trick here that uh, comes into place and is nice sometimes. When you've got multiple terms of s, or polynomials of s in the numerator and the denominator, and uh, you're taking the limit as s approaches infinity. So to do this... Let's just rewrite the limit as s approaches infinity. Now, in the numerator, we're going to factor out an s term from both of these. And because we've got a 2, let's go ahead and pull the 2 out also. So we'll have a 2s times 1 plus 1 over s in the numerator. And we're going to do a similar thing down here. We're going to factor out the highest power of s. In this case, is s is to the first power. So we bring out an s times... 1 plus 2 over s. And we're evaluating this as s approaches infinity. What this does is it puts the s terms, all of our s terms here, well, first of all, those cancel. And it puts all of our s terms in the denominator so that as the limit as s approaches infinity of these two terms with s, because s is in the denominator, those terms go to 0. And you're left with simply here on the left-hand side that equals 2, as we knew from L'Hopital's rule. Now over here, the limit as t approaches 0 plus. We now have to go back to our understanding of the unit step function, that at 0 plus, the unit step function equals 1. Had we been evaluating this at 0 minus, the unit step function would have equal 0. So the limit of the unit step function as t approaches the positive side of 0 is 1. And here, this is pretty straightforward, e to the minus 0, or e to the 0, is 1. And again, because we're on the positive side of 0, the unit step function is 1 there. And so here, we get that equaling 2. And as we hoped, the limit as s f of s 
of this f of s approaches the same value as the limit of this f of, or the limit as t approaches zero plus of that f of t.